Hi everyone, Chris here from IELTS Advantage with another success story. So today we have Doreen who is going to share her success story with you guys so that you can learn from her and be successful yourself. So Doreen, could you just start off by introducing yourself to everyone? Okay, my full name is Doreen Lata and I'm from Fiji. Oh, Fiji has two major islands with 11 one more level. Currently I'm in Sabsavu, that is also known as Hidden Paradise, if you will look through Google I suppose. Anyway, um, and I'm a school teacher by profession, teaching mathematics in secondary school. Excellent. And can you take everyone through your IELTS journey? So how many times did you do the test? What scores were you getting? What score did you get eventually? Okay, like um, my, my aim was to get registered in New Zealand as a teacher. So I decided to start off uh, with IELTS uh, in academic module and I needed all seven for all the four modules. Um, I did uh, the first trial, first time I did set for the test was in April 2018. Yeah. So at that time, like I managed to get seven in the reading and the listening, but uh, I fall short of uh, in speaking and writing. So second time I set for the test was 2019 April. Yeah, 2019 April. And then, so over there, three modules, I managed to get seven seven and above that was speaking, reading and listening, but I was still stuck with my writing and I told my husband, no, I can't do it on my own. And then I searched online, I read about this IELTS advantage, advantage and I decided to join. So that was last year in May I joined and then I set for the test in September and I got the desired scores. So I and I was surprised for my writing came to 7.5. And I was just stuck with 6.5 before joining you guys. Excellent. So fresh shot, fresh shot after joining you people, I managed to get my writing to 7.5. Excellent. So let's focus on how you got from 6.5 to 7.5 in writing, because that's, that's what a lot of people struggle with. And um, so first of all, when we looked at your writing and we were giving you feedback, um, what were the main reasons why you were stuck at 6.5? What did we tell you about that? My main issue was grammar. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was always falling, short, always falling short because of my grammar. And um, by getting the feedback, like it was uh, my, like I, I saw feedback as a way to improve myself. Mm -hmm. I kept on, like it was quite hard for me to go on uh, like uh, a go live with you people because of the time difference. So I was used to play the recorded videos and watch it over and over and over. And I had like actually two lecture plates full of your notes while okay. looking at your writing videos. And then I did each and every question, the um, samples that you gave. Task one was okay, but I found task two quite challenging. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time the feedback came, a grandma, a grandma, a grandma. And then, so I took help from one of my colleagues as well. Actually, she's a... Uh, head of her department of languages and she was able to help me a lot mm -hmm. with my grammar. Excellent. And were there any particular areas of grammar that we identified were, pro were problem areas? I suppose all expect of my grammar was totally not, not there uh -huh. the way I was supposed to do it. Yeah. And I suppose I was able to overcome that by writing a lot. Every free time I'll get, I'll just keep on writing, writing, writing. Mm -hmm. I, um, and if you were giving advice to someone who is in the same position as you, as you were, so someone who is at a, probably a, a six for grammar and needs to go up to a seven for grammar in order to move from six, 6.5 overall to a seven or 7.5, what advice would you give them? Okay. I would say, well, you listen to the advice that you people are giving and you should not book a test till you're totally ready for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, no, and if you're really stuck with your grammar, join the grammar course, I suppose, which I did not do. <laughs> um, and listen to the advice that you people are giving. Just follow it, plan your work, check each and every sentence while you're writing. Planning is very important. I I realized that eventually, when I started, I thought, oh no, it's just a waste of time. But then, as I kept on writing, writing, then I could see that planning is very important, and actually, it was saving me time. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I think yeah. planning can also help your grammar 
because if you do all of your thinking during the planning stage, that means that two things will happen. Number one, you will be able to focus more on your grammar during the writing stage because you won't be thinking of idea, you know, trying to generate ideas and trying to think of how to answer the question and structure and all those things. And planning will also mean that your time management is better. So you'll have more time at the end to, to check those sentences, to check the paragraphs for those little mistakes. I totally agree with you because I have seen that myself, that planning helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I managed to save a time, a lot of time. And like, I was really focused what I actually wanted to write rather than uh, why in the process of writing, I don't have to hunt for ideas Mm because my plan was already there. And a lot of people, when they get a low score for grammar or you say to them, you need to improve your grammar on the writing test, IELTS test, um, a lot of them think that that means that you need to make your sentences more complex, use a broader range of structures and more tenses. Is that what you did or did you do something else? No, no. I just kept it simple. Mm-hmm. Simple and easy to follow. Yeah. Because if you if you make the sentence complex, that's where you'll go wrong with your grammar. Because mm-hmm. you're trying to throw in three or four sentences together. And that's what I could not do. And I would advise people not to do that. Mm-hmm. Keep it short and simple. It will be easy for you to follow if you're having problems with grammar. Yeah, I think that's great advice because a lot of people do the opposite because it's a natural thing whenever you don't get a high score, you think in order to get higher, I need to make it more complex, more complicated. But really for you know, 99% of our students, the key is to simplify things plus work on those little mistakes. So uh, work on accuracy and simplifying things. And then that, that results all the time in students getting a higher score for grammar, which will really help you overall. Uh, and, uh, and improving your grammar will also improve your whole essay because it makes the, the essay easier to understand. So that improves your, your coherence. It also makes it easier for the examiner to understand if you've answered the question. So that helps with task response. Um, and it can also help your vocabulary as well because you understand you know, the, the interaction between that word and the other words in the sentence. And it just helps absolutely everything. So well done for, for working so hard. And just to re- um, mention a little bit about mindset, I think anybody watching, what Doreen did was she looked at each grammar mistake that she was making and seen that as an opportunity to improve. And instead of, oh, I'm terrible at grammar, I'm never going to get bad, or I'm never going to get better, um, looking at each uh, mistake as an opportunity to improve, and, and that's and plus hard work, and that's why Doreen succeeded. Um, there's no you know, magic tricks you can learn that are going to magically improve your grammar. Would you agree with that, Doreen? Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. Yeah. It's all your hard work. You have to write and write and write. That's the only way forward. So thank you so much for sharing that with everyone, Doreen. And I wish you the best of luck in the future. And uh, once the whole coronavirus thing is over, if you if you need any help um, assisting you in any way, moving to um, whichever country you're going to move to, feel free to, to get in touch with us. Okay. Thank you, Grace. And finally, I'd like to say thank you again, because it's because of you people, I managed to get the scores that I really wanted. And any so, particular teachers you want to say hello to? Because they, they watch these videos. It's nice for them to... Um, Actually, there was a, like a, when I joined, uh, you people were doing the correction just uh, by giving the feedback in writing. And when I was on to my last one, you started with the video correction thing. So I opted for that. And I suppose that really helps hmm. when students yeah. opt for video correction things because uh, we can put everything in paper, on paper. Yeah. Yeah. And when you go for video feedback, it really helps. So mostly I was uh, used to listen to Michael and... Uh, Madam Susan gave the video feedback, the last uh, writing that we submitted. I'll let Michael and Susan know then. (laughs) I'll be happy that they they were able to help you out. Thank you so much, Soreen, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, Chris here again. Hopefully you enjoyed that success story video. That student was part of our IELTS VIP course. And on that course, we show students exactly where they're going wrong and exactly what to do 
to get the score that they need. And we give them all the help and support that they need in order to get a seven, eight, or even nine in their IELTS test. Now, we only work with a really, really small number of students. Because of the level of help and feedback and support that we give students, we can only work with a very, very small number of them. But we also have more success stories than any other online or offline course in the world, which has created a huge amount of demand for our course. So we're the only course in the world, I believe, that has a very, very, very long waiting list. If you want to join that waiting list, all you have to do is just click here and you'll be able to add your name, add your email address, and then when one of our students becomes successful and leaves the course, the next position can be for you. Hopefully see you in there. Bye-bye.